I did see Neo Upper Energy. That's a great card for these Pidgeot builds as we're getting into this first game here of our round four. And Jared's going to kick us off with the Chen Pao EX. Going to get a shivery chill and have a nice look at the deck whilst pulling some water energy out. This is a great way for you to thin the deck. Of course, we're trying to use some great item ratios in this deck list to make the most out of our Pokestop. So this is a great way to go about that. And uh, Michael has started with the Manaphy, so he might have to prioritize moving that early on. Yeah, that Manaphy could be a little bit of a pain. It's not one you want in the active in the early game. It is one you want on the bench because of the threat of Greninja, which is always present here in these Chen Pao decks because you can power them up so easy with that stage two Backscalibur, of course. The whole deck really built around that Backscalibur lets you accelerate as much water energy as you like during your turn. So you put it down and then Chen Pao uses Hail Blade to do huge damage. Radiant Greninja can hit 90 to two different Pokemon. But it can also concealed cards and draw you some more. I think that's one of the main benefits of Jared sticking with his tried and trusted archetype. When you sequence Chen Pao well, it can be a thing of beauty. We've already seen the Shivery Chill combine nicely with the concealed cards of this Greninja, and he's drawn straight into some more Nest Ball here, so can begin developing some of these evolving basics. As you say, Ross, the Batscalibur, a really important stage two Pokemon, so you can ramp the Hailblade, but also the engine really does rely on Bibarel so that you can keep drawing cards and cycle and we're going to see a poke stop now as well. A really good opener here for Jared. And we see Buddy Buddy Poffin and Superior Energy Retrieval getting drawn off there. Did lose a Cypher Maniacs code breaking. But of course, there is always going to be, I'm assuming there's going to be a Pal Pad here. No, I don't think there is. No, there's the no Pal Pad. That was actually just going. Gone. Yeah, but another Buddy Buddy Poffin is a big deal because sometimes you're going to get both of your Bidoof out if you have the possibility of it. Oh, double Bidoof is always lovely. Of course, it's a deck that doesn't have that natural draw. So getting double Bidoof, double Bibarel. Our former world champion, Andre Skabal, told us if you want to win Worlds, <laughs> play Bibarel. And it seems like a lot of top players have listened. So there's a couple of Fridgebacks, a couple of Bidoof. This is it's brilliant. It, it's everything you want from turn one if you're Jared. What a great start. You can see why Jared keeps playing <laughs> the Chen Bao archetype if it's drawing like this. And also a big uh, thing to note is that he had the heads up play of picking the 70 hit point Fridgebacks from the second Buddy Buddy Poffin. He doesn't know that he's up against Dragapult yet. So that was a really big choice and it's going to possibly pay off in this game. Yeah, when you see a Manaphy on your opponent's side of the board with no mulligans, you have very little information as to exactly what your opponent's playing. I think this Buddy Buddy Poffin might start giving it away a little bit here. And of course, all the top players here know that Dragapult it is not one way to play it. Like we were chatting about a minute ago, one of the ways we all know about is this Charizard Pidgeot Dragapult build. So these basics are probably going to give it away. You've got to imagine it's going to be a Dreepy and a Pidgey. I think Michael's also put another Buddy Buddy Poffin towards to the top, so that might indicate we have an Arvin in this hand as well, so we can go even wider on this bench. See Cleffer in hand, yeah, there is the Arvin coming down, so a second Buddy Buddy pop in. Both players getting really nicely established here, and Michael is also going to use that rescue board. As I mentioned, Ross, you've got to protect this Manaphy, but I also think that Michael is holding a Cleffer here, so can retreat into Cleffer and reload the hand that way. I like Cleffer. There are some decks that can really take advantage of your low HP Cleffer. If they're playing Monkey Dory, if they're playing Dragapult, but actually, Cleffer with 30 HP, leave it in the active. You've got to attack into it, unless yeah. you can get some kind of double KO with Greninja, which, of course, you can't because of the mana fee. So forcing your opponent to use a real attack to KO your 30 HP Cleffer, <laughs> always a fun little play. And I think you've nailed it, Joe. That does seem to be Look at this. where even we're headed. <laughs> even attaching the Forest Seal Stone just so you can draw one random card. Michael does not want to put multi prizes onto the board if he can help it in this matchup, knowing that Chen Pao can capitalize on it. It's just going to pass with the Cleffer and gets a nice refill there. Michael's already holding on to Rare Candy Pidgeot for next turn, so he's picked up a few additional pieces there. As we pass things over to Jared, who's going to start off with a Shivery Chill once again, start unloading these Water Energy. It's a great thing to have where you start using your Concealed cards to just fuel those discard piles with Water Energy, so those Superior Energy Retrieval come to life throughout the remainder of the game. So there's just so much internal synergy with the way that Chen Pao's built these days. And you do see a lot of the players on Chen Pao this weekend seem to be the players who have been playing it for a while, who yeah. are really consistent in good finishes with Chen Pao, know the deck, and there's a lot to be said. You, this deck came out like a year before yeah. Dragapult did. Yeah. So it's four sets earlier. You've had a lot more games than the Dragapult players have had games. Yeah, so you're in good stead knowing that your decklist is basically perfect at this point, especially Jared, who's played just so much Chen Pao yeah. non-stop uh, for uh, over a year now, I think. As we have Irida in hand, we will be piecing together a rare candy for Batscalibur here. 
if we want to. You don't necessarily have to. You could just value getting a bit barrel in play instead this turn. You can just turn attach to this Chen Pao. But it looks like Jared is going to go for a candy play. You obviously have a lot of 60 hit point basic Pokemon, so evolving these up out of Dragapult range is going to be important this turn. Yeah, you don't want to be throw throwing into the Dragapult. Dragapult does 200 to the active and then drops six damage counters on the bench. And there's always been a big difference between 60 and 70 HP Pokemon, but with Dragapult, it is really, really pronounced. Yeah. Leaving a 60 HP Pokemon on your bench can basically turn into just an easy extra prize for your opponent that you do not want to be giving up. So we do see the Batscaliber coming down here. There's a second energy onto the Chen Pao that activates the attack, and it really is not going to take much to take out the Clefa. Do we see any Bibarel yet? Is there any cards I, available? I didn't see any Ultra Balls, so Michael could, you know, if is able to use the Pidgeot to find Neo Upper next turn, could be cashing in on some of these early Bidoof, and that could be a real problem for Chen Pao. It really requires the draw power from that engine Pokemon. It is just going to be a quick KO on this Clefer as expected. Let's see what Pram can pull together now that he's picked up this huge hand thanks to the Clefer. He can go uh, straight into Pidgeot EX. I don't know how good the hand is outside of that, though. We don't have any Dracloak draw. We have Dragapult, but just one Fire Energy. That feels weak. Do you just have to you just Pidgeot for Iono here, possibly? It feels so weak. It's not what you were looking for. The chance of finding a single Neo Upper Energy off an Iono is significantly less. We are going to post it first. There's a Candy and an Ultra Ball. That is stunning. He even <laughs> fist bumped and laughed straight at Jared, saying, I'm going to use that stadium. And now Pram's turn completely flips. That is able to Candy into Dragapult and can use that Quick Search to grab Neo Upper now. That changes everything, Ross. That was one of the best Pokestops I've ever seen. <laughs> your hand's got nothing. What you really want is your Dragapult. My and goodness. your opponent's Pokestop Gives you rare candy and a Pokemon search. <laughs> we could even boss his orders the Bats Calibre as well here. We could KO Bats Calibre and a Bidoof here. I think that's got to be it's got to be on your mind. I would love that. You're not turning off all of your opponent's draw. There's still a Bidoof ready to evolve into a Bibarel, but you are really hurting your opponent there. Look at as you, is that your own Bibarel? Yeah, you can grab Bibarel. Oh, that's, that's just. B barrel there is, yeah. We can play the boss's orders, draw <laughs> up with B barrel, get four cards. If you happen to hit that Neo Upper or anything else helpful, we're still looking for Dracloak, of course. Pram has so much going on here. Two fantastic engine Pokemon already. Then as we find more stage one, we're just getting more draw power into play. And this is part of the way Pram's deck works so well. Because you've got the B-Barrel there, because you've got your Dracloak, you're drawing a bunch of cards. There's an Ultra Ball yeah. and a Dracloak just drawn naturally there is going to help a lot. That's going to let you get one card out of the top two, which is fantastic. Yeah, this is very similar to an old Pidgeotto, actually, the Recon Directive ability. Yep. You get to keep one, and the other goes to the bottom of the deck. So you're not losing any resources and you're seeing two cards. This is a very valuable option. The Defiance Band is the pickup, Ross. So now we could response KO this Chen Pao. Yeah, Dragapult generally 20 damage away from a Chen Pao. But that Defiance Band, because you are behind on prizes, will give you an extra 30 damage. I still like going after the Batscaliber. Personally, force your opponent to have a rare candy. I think, I think because... Pram didn't play the boss before the barrel. It showed that he wanted to use Arvin instead this turn, and that was yes. what was taken from the Recon Directive. Agreed. So we can just Arvin Defiance and still take a three-prize turn here. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. It's a, it, uh, Both of these are good ways to go. Yeah, I think it is just two really strong options <laughs> straight away. And it does, yeah, we see three cards being looked at there. as well. So you can just hold on to your boss's orders instead. Oh, counter catcher would also be a fantastic way to go. And this is what we see from these slower decks that take a couple turns to set up. Counter catcher, sometimes unfair stamp, defiance band, cards that activate when you're behind on prizes or when your opponent is taking prizes. And here we see counter catcher, oh. defiance band, and now we see exactly what's going on. What it is going to be the KO. Well, and actually, no, it could be either. This actually leaves both plays open because you only need one of them. You need the counter catcher or the defiance ban for the yep. KO. Yep. I mean, you just get to hold a lot of options. It's it's so good. What a turn this has been for Michael. And the thing is, against Chen Pao, you're not expecting your hand to be disrupted. It's not a big Iono deck. Here does right. come the Batscaliber. This is what I was hoping for. This is what I like to see here, because you're making your opponent have a lot more options and a lot of things to get going. And obviously, KO on the Bidoof there. That is two prizes, but it's a big two prizes. And actually, Michael Pramwatt's already got two stage twos out. And the deck is now proper job rolling. 
the good news for Jared is his hand is quite large, so he should be able to still make something come together here. It's really not out of the realms of possibility that Jared can at least KO this Dragapult back and remove the Neo up at energy, which is a big deal. But not only that, Jared also needs to establish more Fridgey backs, and the issue is they all have 60 hit points. Uh, the only one that you can evolve this turn has 70 hit points. The other Fridgey that you play all have 60. So you need to put two 60 hit point Fridgey backs back down on this bench, knowing that one could just be fodder. Yeah, that is not ideal. And then, of course, your bench is kind of a little bit built up. Yeah. But then if you don't do that, you could run out of Batscalibur. And the deck doesn't work if you don't have Batscalibur. So <laughs> here comes a super odd for yeah. one Fridgey backs and two Batscalibur, because I think you're right here, Joe. This is now we do see rare candy already in hand. We've got a nest ball in hand. Yeah, there's it, Cypher Maniac plus water in hand as well. So Greninja can oh, fix nice. the hand quite nicely here. There's already a decent chunk of water energy in the discard pile, especially after using concealed cards. So I think the KO is not the issue. It's just the fact that your board is still getting picked apart here. Yeah, that is going to be. Um, I think less than ideal would be the polite way to put it. It's not what you're looking for. Ooh, but just Greninja you, without the Cypher. Yeah, just going to be the two random cards off the top. Doesn't hit the combo we're looking for. Do we have Search for Batscalibur here? Not You've sure got to we imagine do. there is Search for Batscalibur, or you would have used Cypher Maniac's Code Breaking. You'd hope so. Jared could still combine it with Pokestop. Yes. That's still an option. So possibly that's the route, if we're grabbing Ultra Ball anyway. Does have Cypher Maniac's Code Breaking there. And then this also, like you say, combos of Pokestop. You just put two item cards on the top of your deck. Guaranteed to draw those two item cards off a of Pokestop, and then that third card is random. It could be anything. My only preference for using it with Greninja is that you could put a bit barrel to the top, yes. and I really want to evolve off this Bidoof because, again, it's another way that Michael can punish you. If you just end up without a board, that makes Michael's late game Iono so much more dangerous. Yeah, getting rid of this last Bidoof here and then Ioing in, in a couple of turns would be absolutely huge. So we do see the Cypher Maniac's code breaking coming down. You get to search two cards from your deck, put them on top. Yeah, two Ultra Ball here, uh, no surprise. Okay, so we'll still be able to be barrel this turn. Yeah. Just getting double Ultra Ball. You're just losing so many cards by doing this. That's, that's kind of why I would have liked the Greninja first. Um, no, but agree. it is just going to be the poker stop. Now you get the two Ultra Ball, and then third card is random. It is a Chen Pao, which hits the discard pile. And now you've got to discard a lot of cards if you want to be Ultra Ball, which you kind of do, because yeah. you need the Batscalibur and you need the uh, Bieber out here. You're losing poker stop and Iron Hands. And as you said, Ross, these Ultra Ball both have to be played here. Batscalibur required so we can Super Cold enough, and the Bib Barrel required here. Rare Candy's already in hand. It's because we have to thin more cards for Bibarrel here. Do we not actually have the KO established? Are we still looking for water energy here? Oh, there is, is superior the energy missing? in hand. There's a ton of superior in hand. And That's there's free energy in the discard, so... Are we spending superiors to gain more cards in hand to then ultra ball the <laughs> energy back into the discard pile? Are we having to finagle this in a wonky way here? Oh, there's the candy into Batscalibur. You're right, Joe, it is starting to... Have this free superior energy retrieval yeah. in hand? Yeah. Oh my word, there's a lot of cards. Jared's got like six cards in his hand this turn to get going. But then again, getting down to a low hand and using Bieber out can be an advantage. Oh, is he getting rid of the second Ultra Ball here? Surely not. Yeah, you have to you have get to rid of your Pokemon. It. The good news is you play three copies of Super Odd. You did just lose a Chien Pao to the Pokestop, which does make things a little more unfortunate. These energy are getting thrown straight into play thanks to Super Cold. But no bit barrel searched. At least it's a response KO for Jared, who does go ahead in prize cards, let's not forget. But again, it's over to Pram to see how you can respond here. What's he got in terms of energy acceleration? Because, of course, you there's no energy yeah. on the board. You would expect a Mela. That's normally pretty common with Pidgeot, but I'm not seeing it in Michael's list. I'm not seeing Mela. I'm not seeing Raihan. Obviously, there's no Zartu established. So this might end up working pretty okay for Jared. I think he's pretty fearful right now of what Michael could do because he's up against an unorthodox list. You know, we're still learning how Dragapult plays. And, and you would expect Mela. You would expect Mela. There's basically two ways Michael Pramor is accelerating energy here, right? You've got your Neo upper energy, which is gone, and your Charizard, which is prized. And I'm having a good old look at Pram's list here, Joe, and I am not seeing much no. in there that accelerates energy. I'm not sure he's got a way to get an attack off this turn. So what's the best thing you can do to hand disrupt? You know your opponent at least doesn't have the barrel in play. So maybe looking to gust up Batscalibur, put them to a lower hand size and be disruptive is the best thing Michael can do whilst attaching to a Dragapult. Unless you think the 70 damage could be useful from Dragapult EX. 
doesn't sound that useful. Doesn't sound you that could useful. take out a one prize Pokemon with it, though. You could just take out Bidoof with the one energy attachment and then load up Charmander on the bench. That if still you... gets you to win in two turns. Oh, no, it doesn't get you to win in two turns because you have to take the one. You do. Yeah. It's still two You could turns. do it with another Dragapult, though. Uh, it gets a little bit weird. You would have to weave in Defiance Band and then deal with a Fridgey as well as another single prize Pokemon. Oh, sorry, a uh, Fridgey and the Chien Pao. That's where things get a little bit foggy. So, yeah, this is a tough turn for Pram. There's just not enough going on with the energy. And this is one of my worries about Dragapult. It's only a two energy attack, which is awesome. Ooh. But you need some kind of energy acceleration to get it rolling. And although there are options right now, there are none available. We do see the Luminion hitting the bench yeah. here, going for an Arvin. This is rough because you don't have space for your Charmander now. And you still feel like that's an important piece. But I think possibly Countercatcher, Batscalibur, plus Iono and hope that the random three cards aren't that great. Possibly you could even Stadium Bounce if that's available. There is Collapse Stadium in the deck list, and there it is. There it's is Collapse Stadium on the board, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going to get rid of the Luminion just used by Pram. Yeah, and you've got to think one of the Fridgebacks has got to go here, because every other Pokemon, you kind of need too much there. I still want to see a KO on the Bidoof. I like the idea of putting my opponent down to a low hand, taking away their draw power. The problem with that is, you do let Jared just bring a Chen Pao back yeah. into the active, with and if Greninja. he's got enough energy, yeah. he will just return KO. And at that point, it's largely the game. There's there's no perfect answer here for Pram, unless I'm missing something. No. In which case, let me know, Joe. <laughs> well, I think a Mela would have solved every issue here. Mela's not really a fantastic supporter card, but it does have synergy with Dragapult because of that fire energy attack cost. It looks like Michael is going to have to try and take this off turn still. It's going to have the Iono here. Actually going to use Viberal first. It does find a decent number of energy cards. You do want to manually attach this turn, one way or another. It is going to be onto Dragapult EX. But this kind of tells Jared, hey, look, I've got no energy accelerator. Just so we're clear, I'm yeah. not accelerating energy. So if Jared is able to go and get a boss's orders or something like that, that would be huge. Although, yeah, there's, is there any? Boss is always in the deck? No, you just play the, the Prime Catcher. <laughs> and Prime you have ca Silene to recover it as well. Is Prime Catcher gone? Is it not in the... Uh, no, it was the Cologne that was prized. We do see the Counter Catcher from Michael. So if it's Bidoof Ross, I think we are taking out this uh, Bidoof. Yeah, agreed. I, I, I like The problem is this does open you up to a return KO without having any gusting, which yeah. is a huge problem. But by the same token, I think... You, you've got a chance here, whereas, like, if you if you take the turn off completely, don't take the KO. If Jared goes Biberel, Prime Catcher, KO, I know you're not <laughs> playing Energy Acceleration, because if you had any, you would have just used it. You've got Pidgeot after all. If there's no whiffing it. You've searched any card with Pidgeot and didn't get it. You don't have it. And at that point, you know it's the game, so. Jared's hand is good, has Irida, so we'll at least be able to respond, but we still have that same issue of the board is getting weaker and we know that with b barrel and pidgeot ex still on the bench for michael pretty safe that jared's probably going down to a one prize card a one card hand next turn and has way less of an engine yeah looking through the decks so looks like there's only one water energy that prime catcher is available in the deck that is sitting in there potentially for next turn if you want a nice easy prize to finish out the game which could end up being important manaphy is still there so your greninja is not an option at the moment because there are some there are some options on the bench, but that Manaphy is taking them away. Let's see, just one energy in the deck. The Irida gets you superior. No, we're just gonna have to draw cards with Radiant Greninja instead here. Fine, Ooh. superior and Pokestop. That's a great deal. That's a great combo. <laughs> I take that deal any day. The concealed cards coming in clutch for Jared. He's now mapping out the superior. Because you're kind of running out of other cards. There's no energy left in the deck. You've kind of got all your Pokemon at this point. So you're kind of in a pretty good position to poke a stop, knowing you're not going to be, well, probably, I'm probably going to be proven wrong, but... Ooh, this prime catcher oh, helps. That's Three item nice. hits is huge. The Buddy Buddy Poffin's kind of a bit meh, but the... It's even, there. Even just candying up into another Bat's Calibre now makes you yeah. a lot safer. Really does. Because Pram otherwise may have been able to just win next turn with a KO on Chien Pao and a 60 hit point Fridgy Bats. Now yep. you can candy Bat's Calibre and be a lot more robust. That's huge, because now you can double superior and get this KO at the same time. Yeah, Both uh, the Pokestop and the Greninja were incredible there for Jared. Yeah, they really worked out quite nice in the end, didn't they? <laughs> so it looks like we're going for a superior energy retrieval and a Baxcalibur, which, of course, yep. we want the rare candy. 
get it up there, get rolling. Jobs are good, and we don't have the candy in hand at the moment, I don't believe. Yeah, I think it is there. Is it We're there? holding on to prime. So yeah, Jared literally just threw every card that wasn't prime catcher, rare candy, and bats caliber onto the desk to say, I'm going to superior these away and just get the KO. So yeah. I think Jared will be going down to one prize here and at least got double bat Scalibur, so it's a bit safer around a response Dragapult from Fram. This is going to be a very, very big turn indeed. There comes a superior energy retrieval. You just got two cards from your hand, get four basic energy from your discard pile. And of course, they can be immediately accelerated with the bat Scalibur. And when, even if you're not drawing good cards off of the poker stop, when you're having to discard for things like superior energy retrieval, it's just like a draw free blank cards at worst. It is going to be the double superior for Jared. You get seven energy back uh, out of your eight water. And you can super cold them all into play. There is the candy bat Scalibur. This is huge. You really put a lot of pressure on it. And as we know, Pram has no acceleration. So it'll be a, a turn off attacking here as Jared goes down to just one prize card left. So for Pram, it's going to be hand disrupt and hope this Pidgeot EX can tank for a turn whilst you build towards another Dragapult. Yeah, and the thing is, although Pram doesn't have much energy acceleration, Jarazard accelerates free energy when it evolves. If you sprinkle them onto different Dragapult, it yep. turns them all into essentially single prize attackers, plus your Neo upper energy as well. One Charizard evolution will literally sort you out for the entire game. That's the theory here. But if you don't have that one Charizard evolution, this happens. And <laughs> Jared does seem to have this game sewn up because Pram just doesn't have anything with which to attack. Well, you could attack with Radiant Charizard, but you would be a little bit vulnerable, especially if you can't bounce this Pokestop. You could end up losing to a superior being hit from Pokestop or some other combination that way. You, yeah, this is a tough one. You have Ino in hand. Is Pram going to go for the Radiant Charizard now and just put as few turns on the clock for Jared to have a hand combined? Or are you just going to try and slow evolve into Dragapult over a couple of turns? It's not being searched out yet. So the Buddy Buddy Poppin was a fail search, which means it's, we're not grabbing the Charmander. So uh, yeah, we are going to forego Charizard EX and go Radiant Charizard here. I think, well, you've only got one prize remaining. Jared has still not used a Prime Catcher. So that's on board. Michael, you know, Michael knows that that's going to be in the deck, right? Chen Pao's going to be playing that. That's going to be the ace deck of choice. So you know that with a small deck at this point, Pokestop, you're worried about Prime Catcher potentially coming out. You know you've only got one prize to give up to win. So this probably is just the best option at this stage. Get the energy, yeah. play the I and O, and just go. go. I really hope you don't have a response KO. Does Pram also have access to the Lost Vacuum? I don't think we've seen it yet. That could be something we could draw towards as well. We have the Ino, we have the Barrel Draw. You could even use the Poker Stop to try and hit Lost Vacuum to then get rid of it. Seems a little bit cheeky, but you're right. I think we need <laughs> rid of it. So the problem is, if Jared hits Superior Energy Retrieval, you just KO with Bat yeah. Calibur. Like you don't need much next turn at all. You're really looking for Superior Energy Retrieval or just Free Energy naturally, whichever is easy, although to be at this stage, you're probably going to need Spirit Energy Retreat. Here we go, Pokestop. I don't think we've seen the uh, vacuum yet. And Ooh, we and still I think we've missed. That was not a good Pokestop. No, just energy and Pokemon from the uh, Iono. So we're having to go in, and Jared might be able to win from Pokestop. There's Ram goes KO. down to one prize as well here with the Radiant Charizard, Combustion Blast. Jared takes a big breath and simply has to hit Superior here. Putting Greninja in the active does give an option to potentially more draw because that's still just already out there. <laughs> Jared doesn't need to be active. He doesn't Here have it in hand. The it's Poke coming down to the Super poker stop. Rod. Urida. No. Bimarel. Not Not hit the Super it yet. Hasn't used concealed cards, but does he have any energy to that's use it? That's the issue. Oh. I think Pram's happy. They're both smiling. They're both laughing. Jared knows he was just a piece away. But Pram should be able to just quick search for Kieran and retreat and move this Charizard back into the active. Yeah, it's just going to be a pass from Jared, and we know Michael has the cards with Quick Search to move this Charizard out of the active with Pidgeot. Free retreat back into Charizard, and that's going to be a thrilling first game. Yeah, Michael Pram, what takes that first game? It did not look like... We saw the replay. It was a genuine mistake. There's no doubt oh, about yeah. that. So I think the judges got that call completely correct as we have a Hisuian Heavy Ball straight away from Jared. And started out that Iron Hands EX. It wasn't something he could weave in on that first game, but it is, of course, a fantastic option within the Chen Pao archetype. 
to uptrade into some of these lower hit point single prizes. Yeah, it's always nice if you can take extra prizes. Does still get KO'd by a Dragapult with Defiance Band, so it's not quite out of that range, unfortunately. Sure. But it is a potential option, and if you've got it there to start, you might as well try and use it. Buddy Buddy Poffin gets the predictable Fridgeabax and Bidoof, and we pass over to Michael knowing that actually the chance of taking a KO for Pram this turn is almost zero. Yep, I think it's not ideal. You normally like to use Chem Pow EX early just to get those water energy flowing out of the hand. So I don't think Jared is holding on to much, to be honest with you. For Pram, though, it's a different story. I think his opening is really strong. I see Buddy Buddy pop in. I saw Luminion, so we can Ooh. grab Arvin. And we could just end up going back into a Clefer again here to end our turn if we really wanted to go full bench. He's already holding on to a number of... He's literally holding on to three different stage twos <laughs> in this hand. Just needs a rare candy to unlock everything. Looks yeah. like he's spying Ultra Ball to lower the hand size, perhaps, as well. One obvious option you've got here, use your Pidgeot. Get your Pidgeot out as your first stage two, and then you've got that quick search to go and get your second. So we see Clever hit the bench, we see Luminion hit the bench, and we are going to be searching out a supporter card for the turn, which might well be Arvin. Yeah, There are other options. Probably going to be Arvin, but there are other options. Yeah, I like the rescue board here to retreat Pidgey. Alongside that Forest Seal, oh, sorry, alongside a Buddy Buddy Poffin here, just a full board. I feel like that's pretty reasonable. Pram going to have a quick look through those prize cards. Playing so many cheeky counts <laughs> that you really have to keep track of these. Yeah, prizing becomes very, very important. If you look down the list, there's so many <laughs> yeah. ones. Of course, one of the reasons you can play so many ones is because of that quick search ability. You know, you're only playing one copy of Kieran, but we saw that was a card that Pram really needed to win game one. Yeah. You got quick search. Just go and search for it. But it does mean in the early turns, knowing what's not available is very important. Setting up a play where you have to have Kieran if Kieran's prize, not ideal. We do Ultra Ball, the yeah. only Charizard and a Dragapult. I think this actually really heads up as well. You know that your hand gets completely unlocked with Rare Candy, but you wouldn't be drawing enough with Cleffer if we were just buddy-buddying a lot of basics out. Um, looks like he missed a step with the uh, Luminion, but did eventually grab Arvin for, <laughs> as we saw, the uh, Rescue Board as well as the Ultra Ball. Yes. So we can get an additional basic down here. It's going to be another Dreepy. Did we prize the Charmander? Is that why this is happening? Why we got rid of Charizard here? Otherwise, we may have got rid of Boss. There is an option here that you are just trying to thin out the hand, draw with Clefa. Oh, yeah, you, no doubt. You can always just go and get the Super Rod from Quick Search if you need to. That's it's true. not ideal, but it is an option that you don't always have in every deck. You're only playing one, but you can guarantee it with Quick Search, and you can get those Pokemon back if you need. Clef is so interesting to me in this format as well because there are so many ways to punish the low 30 hit points a little bit more than in Temporal Forces where this card was a staple. But it looks like Pram saying, Grasp of Being Draw is so good, I'll accept all those downsides and just make sure I'm getting a huge hand at the end of my turn. Yeah, we do see a draw there. I think four more cards off of the Clef up, Ooh. including that Radiant Charizard. Not much so help. <laughs> but we're going over to Jared, who has a ball search. And I think this Radiant Greninja has to do a lot of work here, Ross. I saw some Bats Calibre in hand. I didn't see any supporter, though. And I think that's something that's holding us back. Yeah, two superior, two Bats Calibre, and this one water energy. Oh, what do we get here? Ooh, We've got Irida. Irida. That is a well good draw <laughs> off of a Greninja. And of course, that can go and get you your rare candy. And so Ultra Ball for the Barrel. Yeah, and we get the Bats Calibre as well. Ultra Ball for the Barrel, draw some cards. That was a very nice draw off of the Radiant Greninja. Still some awkwardness going on, but obviously you've got to play the Irida here because what else are you going to do? It looks like actually there's at least one Baxcalibur in hand, maybe two. Yeah, there are two in hand and two superior. So you're still missing a few pieces. I think Jared's using Iron Bundle here, possibly just as an option for this Ultra Ball fodder, really. Yeah. And then you would just grab Rare Candy, lower your hand size as much as possible, and then just barrel three cards because you'd hold on to double superior. Yeah, you cannot be thrown away those superior energy retrieval early in the game. We saw how big they were back in game one. So we do, what are we going for here? Yeah. Oh yes, there's a Bibarel off of the search there. So we've got the Bibarel. Yeah. And it seems like we're gonna have Bascalibur as well. This is, it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. You don't even have a Chen Pow out right now. That's the big problem. <laughs> but, I mean, look, compared to where we were game one, Joe, this is way better. Oh, that's a Chen Pao. Chen Pao and the Pokestop. What do we need from this? Do we need to hit exactly Prime to be doing good things here? Unless you Maybe can see vessel. another search option. Ooh, that's that's option. awkward. No oh, energy discarded option. from the Pokestop. That could have unlocked some of your, your superior. 
just having Batscalibur in play is risky. And there is no power pad in the deck, so when those supporters hit the discard pile, they gone. I think Pram might once again be trying to yoink Jared's poker stop for great effect. <laughs> we saw it in game one. Oh, Dracloak off yeah. the top deck is very nice. That's going to give you a couple more cards. Because you've got two GP down, you can evolve one into Dracloak and still have the option for a Dragapult this turn. Here comes the Ultra Ball. Yeah, we're just going to thin a Pokemon out here. Maybe just an additional basic. The Manaphy seems like a good choice. Yep. Protect yourself that little bit from the Radiant Greninja. Also takes a Pokemon out of the deck to improve your odds of the Pokestop. If Pokestop hits Rare Candy, we are once again popping off, I think. Yeah, Rare Candy is going to unlock this deck. Rare Candy will get you the Pidgeot, of course, Pidgeot's already in hand. And then from there, you can quick search for whatever other cards you like. We do still have the option of Dracloak, of course, which hasn't actually been used yet, just to yep. into. So there's still a lot going on. This is what I love about Pram's deck. It takes a couple of minutes to get rolling, but when it does, you are seeing so many extra cards. Here's the Dracloak. What do we see? Well, it was an easy choice, and oh, it's because it was, it was Arvin. Arvin. We can grab Forest Seal Stone and Rare Candy, and now we're getting two quick searches, Ross. I think that means we have Neo Upper Energy plus Dragapult to start attacking here. Yeah, you still want to work towards that Charizard, so we don't. And I know Brown won last game. We do not want to see a repeat of that mid-game weight. Where's all my energy gone? Yeah. But we do have the Luminion now, which is a Pokemon V, so can use Forest Seal Stone. And now between that and the Quick Search, two cards of any description coming out of your deck. And that is going to be absolutely huge. I mean... Do well, we want so this is the question. Do we go aggressive or do we just go Dracloak, attach and grasp again? You know that your opponent has that very large Iron Hands EX just chilling. Well, Pram's made his decision. He's going aggressive with Neo Upper. <laughs> oh, it's an awkward one because if I can get the KO on the Iron Hands, 100% want to go after that. But because there's no KO been taken, that means that you can't actually KO because you need to find spam, but it's not an option. Maybe just the 60 damage on Big Barrel is so valuable, so you can get rid of those later down the line. It might, it might actually be better for you that the Iron Hands isn't KO'd. Look at the triple hit! Oh my word! We got, what have we got? We got Enhanced Ultra Ball, Hammer, can, now you Rare don't Candy, have, yeah, you Ultra don't have to, Ball. You don't have to Forest Seal Stone now either. You can just hold that. Oh my word, you get the Dragapult. <laughs> How is this happening? Fram doesn't play that many item cards. There is the V-Star Power, so we are still using it. And it looks like we're going for Collapse Stadium here. This is huge. I really like this because yeah. you know that Jared wants to put down more than just another... Well, he wants to put another Frigibax down, right? Yes. He has to, essentially, because this Batscalibur is under huge threat. So forcing Jared to have another Pokestop is a really smart move in the process of getting rid of this Luminion, which is a very vulnerable... Sometimes not only two prize Pokemon, could be three prizes if it's amped via Iron Hands. Yeah, it's an amp you very much target, which has been taken off the board. And this is where you said you don't want to take the KO because the Collapse Stadium has board locked Jared. There's no more Pokemon you're allowed to play. So you've got to work with what's already on the board, knowing that Dragapult next turn is minimum going to take... Wow. The only way you don't take free prizes is if you take out the Batscalibur and the Beaverell, which I think is a fair trade-off. This is where we'll see Jared's brain start ticking. We have the Cypher Maniac, we have Greninja, we have the Barrel to draw cards. What can we piece together here? Because there's still a lot on the table. I like the choice of Earthen Vessel plus Prime Catcher. Maybe we could work towards Chempow Hailblading the Pidgeot EX. That would be a big swing turn. Yeah, that would be good. There's no real good target for Ampy very much now that the Luminion has hit the discard pile because you're not playing anything like Iron Crown or Future Booster Energy Capsule. This isn't a deck where you're really boosting up the damage of the Iron Hand, so you have to go for stuff that you can naturally KO, and Pidgeot is just 40 HP away from that. So here's the concealed cards that get you the two cards off of Cypher Maniac's Code Breaking. And yeah, as you called it, here we go. What are we getting up? I think KO on the Pidgeot would be huge. And it's, you got, yeah, you got two energy off of the Chen Pao's ability yeah. anyway. Yeah. So should this should sure. be easy enough to get the KO. Yeah, especially with the barrel draw as well. I yeah. think we're piecing towards it. The thing that is still awkward is that you need to unlock this bench as quickly as possible because you need to have backup Frigibax here. Because this does open yeah. the opportunity for Pram just to go, okay, fine. <laughs> so I'm going to gust your fridge back, take out that and the Beaverell as well. The Iron Hands can wait till later. I'm going after the Beaverell because that's your draw engine. Yeah. 
and then that's almost like the whole prize map because then you just get like Radiant Greninja, drop the extra damage from Dragapult's attack onto Iron Hands, and that's a win in two attacks or two more attacks. Free you can see Jared going through the motions, shaking his head, thinking, "Why did I evolve the 70 hit point Frigibax first as well?" That was the first uh, basic he searched, and now is just under so much more threat because it's if you put 60 hit point Frigi down, they can still be targeted by Pram. Here comes an Ultra Ball, but right now any Pokemon you search isn't going to hit the bench because that yeah. Collapse Stadium limiting both players to four bench spots total means you're, no one is allowed to bench anything else until that stage. No, you're not allowed to do that yeah. because of the Collapse you Stadium. You can't even take that to hand because you just need to be barrel into Stadium Bounce. That's the first priority. Yeah, you, you can't, can't do that. This. Wait, that's five benches. Yeah, we can't put this Frigibax into play. You we'll can't make sure bench we're on that top of this. Collapse Stadium is in play. Yeah, that's the hand. We know that much. But it means you're getting one less from the barrel. Maybe it's just fodder for the earthen vessel. Yeah, okay, so it's just being discarded for more water. Yeah, here's a couple more water. And you did see some hitting the discard pile, really powering up those superior energy retrieval as well. So you're going to be able to play superior energy retrieval, get four energy back from the discard. I think there's four. There's at least three I can see there. And there's two on the Chen Pao. You're going to need a bit more. Here comes the Biberel. Draw in more cards. There's an energy and a Bidoof and a Super Rod. Yeah, notably no stadium. So the collapsed stadium from Tram, really smart choice with the Forest Hill Stone because it's put Jared into a horrible position now. He's had to prime catcher away the Dragapult. So you still have that Neo upper option on the bench. And you know that you can take out this Bat's Caliber and Jared will have no response there whatsoever because you would lose Super Cold for at least a turn. Yeah, best case scenario, you can bench a Frigibax and get it back. But of course, if you're benching 60 HP Frigibax, we know they're not going to last long because they get KO'd by the residual damage from Dragapult's attack. So here's an energy onto, and there's a KO. Yeah. So that's that's easy enough. We knew that was coming. But there's not enough energy on the board to launch a KO an attack next turn without Frigibax. And Jared's about to receive some bad news because Pram is holding on to boss's orders, has been holding it since turn one. So I think we're going to very quickly see the punish here by taking out Batscalibur. Here it is, boss's orders from Pram straight into the Cleffer. Benching Badoof. we see an energy attachment to the Dracloak. It's all you need to do here. It's feeling fantastic. You're going to take out the beaver roll as expected, Ross. Yeah, that You've was leveled up the prizes, but it just means that Jared has no play this turn. And it means Pram can win next turn. All he needs to do next turn is KO the Greninja or something else, put the residual damage onto the Iron Hands. Ah, uh, there would be one prize away. Maybe uh, you can't even get towards the Chen <laughs> Paolo. You're not even behind. Although, if Jared were to take a prize, then Michael could actually win next turn with the Defiance Band. It's just horrible that Jared has to put 60 hit point Frigibacks down onto this board, knowing that you're just feeding Pram more prizes. That's what feels so grim here. You have one 70 hit pointer that you can recover right now. And this is why Chen Pao is less popular. The question mark for this tournament was how popular is Dragapult going to be? Yep. If it's popular, Chen Pao has a horrible matchup. We're seeing it right here, how bad it can be sometimes as we whiff the Shivery Chill. But if there isn't that many Dragapult players, Chen Pao's still a really powerful archetype. So Jared's kind of just run the gambit and is run into the Dragapult in, and this, it's uh, not, in this round four. Yeah, it's not working out like he wanted it to, unfortunately. He does bench the Fridger backs there. And just having a look through his deck. <laughs> All of his other basics have 60 hit points at this stage. This nest ball is quite poor. But the problem is, if you just leave one fridge of axe down, then your opponent can be like, oh, cool. So I'm going to gust that up and KO it. Correct. While also <laughs> dropping six damage counters on anywhere oh, I like. We could. You can't even manually attach the Greninja here. Just has to pass. So Pram, if he can weave in another KO on the bench fridge of axe, would be huge here. They see the Suin Heavy Ball searching out those prizes. It does look like that was failed. Yep. Just getting that card out of his hand. I mean, gusting here would be huge. You don't need to gust. You're going to get the KO onto, well, it, it's probably the Bidoof, honestly, would go down. You could go after the Iron Hands, but you could also save that till later. Because the Chen Power Decks, they're not playing stuff like Professor Turo. They're not, they're not fixing those Pokemon on the bench. They are leaving them there with all the damage. 
I think the good news is Pram played the one copy of Boss's orders, and it is just a one count. The rest of your gust comes in the form of counter catcher and their level on prize cards. So I think Pram at least has to attack into the Chen Pao, but maybe that makes our prize map just taking out Iron Hands here, saying that Jared's been slowed down long enough this one turn, and you're just going to start establishing double Dragapult to close out this game. Yeah, because right now, anything... Oh, there's the, the Kieran. Oh, that's the there's game. the Kieran. That's the game. You get this 30 <laughs> damage extra. You KO the Chen Pao. You put the residual damage onto the Iron Hand. And that is the game. Michael Pramwell takes four prizes in one turn to finish out the 2-0 victory. Impressive stuff. What a deck list. Is this the new way to play Dragapult EX? I've still got so many questions. <laughs> and we've just seen it perform so perfectly.